and welcome. Today I am going to be making a backgammon board. I recently showed this to my niece once it was completed and I said, hey, do you like this backgammon board that I made? And she said, what? And I said, do you like this backgammon board I made? And again, she said, what? So I realize not everyone knows what a backgammon board is and that's perfectly fine. Um, for those who may not know, uh, from research I did, it appears to be about a 5,000 year old game that I personally would liken to checkers. But going back to what I'm actually doing, um, I am making this with two different tones. I'm going to be using a pink and a green interference for a whitish opal type of color. And then I am going to be using a pigment paste called Peacock Dance. Um, and I will be adding some Teal It Sparkles Michael, Mica to that because I wanted it to be more of a green teal color than a blue. And once I had all of my colors mixed and integrated into the resin, I then chose to use pipettes to start painting in those triangles. The reason I did that is because the lip on the mold is very shallow. So using the pipettes allowed me to not have bleed between the triangles. And I wanted to be able to have that true separation of color. And I, I, on the white, I am alternating the pink and the green interference. I could have mixed it all together into one, but I wanted to see that separation of color I was trying to go for as opposed to having it all mixed together. And I'm then just alternating the white and the green per the triangles, you know, per how a traditional backgammon board would be laid out. And I did that to both sides. I did not paint the corners or the middle lane at all with any of the color, just heads up. I did um, complete that I, and I started working on the little checkers that go with the backgammon game. And this I had to do twice because the mold only has enough to do one full set. So I just did half green, half white on the first time and then I went back and did that again. And I allowed that to cure per the manufacturer's instructions. Once the triangles were cured, I have this sheet of abalone. The whole sheet looks like this. And I already cut a middle piece, as you can see here. It's um, already been cut. And I use this piece of masking tape to get an idea of the width and I'm using that to mark the width of my cut. For this piece, I'm using an X-Acto knife to cut, and it was not easy using the X-Acto knife. Initially, my very first piece, I used scissors, so I will switch back over to scissors to cut the rest of the pieces. And another warning is that the scissors do make the pieces break as well, so I wasn't able to accomplish this with the X-Acto knife, and I decided I'll just go with the lesser of evils. I also will say I am the worst at measuring anything and even using a ruler and a cutting pad with ruler guides. I still didn't get any of them perfectly square, so don't feel bad if you don't either. But the actual instructions do say to use this masking tape to strengthen the abalone for cutting. It, it made several of the pieces break for me when I tried to take that tape off. So again, I will forewarn, it's fragile, breaks very easily and when you start peeling the tape it cracks it and breaks it. I recommend you determine how you would like to go about cutting the piece individually. Once I had all the pieces cut I placed them in the mold so I could visually see how they looked to also ensure that I had full coverage of the outer edge and the middle lane of the mold and I then removed them from the mold and I placed them to the side of the mold where I was planning to put them. I just flipped them over right on the edge so that I would know where they were. Next, I mixed up about six ounces of resin and I used a pipette to put resin on the edges in the middle lane where I'm putting the abalone. Now I could have just poured the resin directly, but I did not want to get too much resin. I wanted it to be a thin amount, just enough to make the abalone be able to adhere to the piece. And once I had the resin around the edges and the middle lane, I started then flipping those pieces of abalone back in on top of the resin, and I used a skewer just to lightly press them into place. Once I had them all in place, I went back over it with a little bit of that clear resin, um, because I do plan to backfill that with black. 
So once I finished with that, I allowed that to cure per the manufacturer's instructions. And I also went ahead and did the additional checkers that are needed for the game. And now that the layer with the abalone is cured, I mixed up about eight ounces of resin and I'm going to add some of this alumilite black to that. And that's all I'm going to use to pour in to fill the mold. It's just plain black. Once I finished pouring the black, I allowed that to cure for the manufacturer's instructions. All right, we're back the next day and it's time to do mold. Are you ready for this? Let's take a look. Wow, gorgeous. I am very pleased with myself little checkers they match perfectly this is gorgeous I really love how the color turned out it's the contrast that mother that uh, abalone looks absolutely beautiful well here's an up close of the final product I hope you enjoyed this video please don't forget to like subscribe share and press the bell to be alerted to future videos